guys. I hope you guys are doing good this afternoon. I'm literally just on my way to work. I just dropped my son off at school. So now I'm on my way to work for literally an hour. And I gotta leave to go to a meeting. But I wanted to get on here and just give an update from yesterday. If you can tell, you can see that I'm definitely in a better mood than I was yesterday evening. And when I tell you that God is wonder like, woo! Like, we got such a wonderful God. We got such a wonderful Father who really cares for us, who really cares about what we are going through, who really cares about how we are feeling. Like, he knew that I had a burden on, he, he knew I had a weight on my shoulders. He knew I had a weight on me that was so heavy. And when I say his presence was so strong, like his presence was so strong in my house last night. Like when he, when the Holy, when the Holy Spirit took over me, like I wasn't even like planning on doing anything at the moment. I was literally just sitting there. And what, what sparked it all is that I saw something come through my kitchen window. Like I saw something dark come through my kitchen window. And that's when I got up and I started praying. And because whatever that was I had to leave. Because somebody sent something to my house and I had to send it back. Okay. So that is where, I mean, that's where it started. So I was. I mean, and then this is the whole time, too. I was praying in tongues the whole time. And it's probably, I didn't really keep track of time, but it had to be at least two hours. And I was just going in the spirit. And I could just feel God lifting things off of me and breaking things off of me. And things just falling off of me. When I say at the end of it, I felt so relieved. I felt so light. Like, whatever was I was carrying was finally gone. Woo! Like, no better feeling in the world. The heaviness that I had, gone. And I love God so much. He always knows exactly what we need to get, get us in order. But even when we don't know what we need, he always knows what we need what we need, excuse me. And he know he know I needed that. So that's just the testimony for how God came in and showed up and showed out in my life last night to remove that weight off of me. To remove that burden off of me whatever whatever it was I, and that's the thing is i don't even know what what was causing it but god knows everything so even when we like you have your moments or your times or your days where you're like man something's just off and i don't know what it is i don't know why i feel this way i don't know why i'm feeling so heavy like but god knows so what we have to do is we have to turn those things over to god and ask god to help us like sincerely sincerely wholeheartedly ask God like Lord I need your help whatever this is I can't get rid of it on my own whatever this is I need you to help me I need you to save me from it because I don't even know what I'm battling at this time and then when the Holy Spirit comes through and he intercedes for you and you're speaking in tongues and this is why it's so important to speak in tongues because we don't know what to pray how you gonna pray about something but you don't but you don't even know what it is. You don't even know what's, what the problem is. You don't even know what's bothering you. You don't even know why you feel so heavy. You don't know why you feel so sad. You don't know. But God knows. The Holy Spirit knows. And the Holy Spirit knows what to pray for. So when you pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is interceding on your behalf. And I tell you, He interceded for me last night. Like nobody's business. Nobody's business. Even my sons came out interchangeably. They came out one by one and would pray with me and off and on. But like it wasn't even about that. It was it wasn't even about that last night. It was really about relief for myself. And I woke up today. I'm in a better mood. Every day is a good day with God. And the enemy wants so bad to take your joy. These these haters out here, these these discriminators out here, you know, of, of, of God's people want you to be miserable so bad want you to be just go so down you know they don't like to see you happy they don't like to see you winning but God was like not my child not today not today and he did it he did it and I'm so grateful and honored to have him as my father I'm so grateful and honored that he chose me I'm so grateful and honored that he breathes breath in my lungs every single day and allows my body to wake up and live we, we have so much to be grateful for. There's so many people who wake up every day. Every day. And do not acknowledge him. Like, you're not just waking yourself up. You're not just opening your eyes in the morning and saying, self, get up. 
You're not doing that. That is God who is allowing you to wake up. And people do not give him his credit. They don't give him what he deserves. They don't bless him like they should. They don't praise him. They don't worship him. They don't acknowledge him. If you just wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Lord, for life, at least you are acknowledging him and that he the one who gave you that life, that you appreciate the life he gave you. Too many people wake up and they just start their day. They go on about their daily business and they don't even think about, oh, I could have not woke up. There's so many people who don't wake up. That could have been me. They don't think about that. They just wake up and like, man, got to go to work, got to take care of these kids, got to pay these bills, got to blah, 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 blah. But they never, ever acknowledge the one who allows them to wake up every day. And, um, and God still loves them. And he still loves them. That's why he still loves me. He still loves you. He still loves us. He still loves them. And every day, every day that he allows you to wake up is a new day. It's new mercy. It's new grace. It's new mercy and new grace for you to come to him, to surrender to him, to live your life for him, to give yourself to him. It's your new day. It's your new chance at salvation. If you don't have salvation, if you don't know Christ, if you don't know Christ, give your life to God. Surrender to God. Give your heart to him. Whatever you're going through, he is the solver. He is the solver of all your problems. All you have to do is seek his face diligently. Be real in your heart about seeking his face. Don't just do it because it sounds nice. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to pray. And then you don't pray. Don't just say, oh, well, you know, don't keep putting it off. Oh, I'm not ready yet. Or, you know, people make many, so many excuses of why they don't want to get their life to Christ. But the, 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 the truth is, is that... It's a, it's a heavy thing. It's a heavy walk. And a lot of people don't want to take on a responsibility. Of, oh, it's too hard to live your life that way. And you got to try to be perfect. No, you don't have to be perfect. God understands our shortcomings. He understands our flaws. That's why we can repent. That's why Jesus died on the cross. So that you can repent. So that we can repent. So that we can have that second chance at life again. God gives that to us. He understands. He is an understanding God. He is a forgiving God. His wrath and his anger does not last long. His anger is but short. And just as quick as he anger, he loves. Like, I mean, like, it boggles my mind sometimes because I don't think ever until my adult life, actually until my husband, have I ever met a person who, who didn't grow up knowing God or didn't have some sort of foundation uh, of God? And my husband, he did have like a, a foundation early in his childhood. His mom used to go to church, but, you know, she went away from the faith and she went into other things and he was basically raised, you know, in a false religion. So, I mean, and it's crazy, guys, because when I married my husband, um, that's definitely something before we got married that we should have discussed when we first got married i was not in my walk like i am right now um honestly i could have been <laughs> i should have been but I, I wasn't so when we got married it, it wasn't like a big old thing it wasn't until after we got married and then i was really starting to see god more and trying to go back to church and things like that and then i really started noticing things about my husband and then, like, you know, he would um, ask me certain questions. Like, his mom and sister number would, like, dress a certain way. And he would say, and not just every day, but sometimes. He would say, would you ever wear something like this or wear something like that? And I'm like, no, I'm not wearing that. Or he would ask me to go to, like, these little things that they would have. Um, and I would be like, I'm not doing that. Like, I, I, even though I wasn't in that place with God to where I was 100% committed, I was definitely straddling the fence. I wasn't 100% committed to my faith and to, to the kingdom. I knew enough not to not to put myself in that predicament. Like, I'm, you ain't about to get me trapped up. Even then, I'm like, you're not moving me away from God because God had already put it inside of me. You know what I'm saying? He had already put him in me. And there's no way in the world that I was about to stray from my God. And so my husband, uh, sometimes he would uh, start to come around and he would start to see things my way or what I was talking about when I would explain certain things or whatever. And back then, I didn't know half of what I know now. So I could only tell him what I know. My husband knew a lot more about me biblically because his mom made him study the Bible. However, just because you know the Bible don't mean you know the word. Don't mean that you understand the word. And he'll tell you for himself. He said, I can quote scripture, 
And I can tell you this and where to find this in the Bible, but I don't he, I don't have that deep understanding. I don't have the revelation because he never had a relationship with God. You only get that revelation through God. Anybody can open the Bible and read the words, but to really understand what you're reading, to really understand the meaning, to really get what God is showing you, because you can read a scripture and that scripture, that one scripture, you can read it so many times and each time God will reveal something new to you just through that one scripture because it's the revelation that he's given to you at that time, that time. I'm telling you like, so um, that, that was the beginning of a lot of challenges in my marriage. Because, you know, I'm trying to go this way. My husband is not trying to do anything. He don't want to do what his mom do. He didn't want to do, he didn't want to do nothing spiritual. He didn't want to do anything. And so, he was, um, when I really started digging real deep into God, really, a couple years ago, digging really deep into God, like, I'm doing this, like, God literally pulled me up. He literally saved me from death. I could have been dead right now. My kids could be motherless right now. But God allowed me to live. He told me, get up get up because I was laying there and I was allowing myself to die. I'm diabetic and my blood sugar, when I finally got up and I went to the doctor because I was putting off going to the doctor, my A1C was so high. My blood sugars was in the 400. I could have been in a diabetic coma. I could have been losing my toes and my fingers and I could have had a stroke or a heart attack or brain damage or liver problems, kidney problems. I'm about to cry guys because when I tell you God is a, oh, he is better than good, you know, uh, who sings, sings that song, is it Todd something, Todd, not Todd Delaney, it's the other one, can't think of his last name, but he has this song called Better Than Good, he like, how, talks about how God has been better than good to him, so he's like, God's been better than good to me, yes he has, because I could be dead right now, and I could have died in my inequity, I could have died in my sin, and I could be in hell right now. But God said, wake up. He said, get up. And he made me move. And when I did that, I was able to see, like, what are you doing with yourself? What are you doing with your life? And God took me out of a dead place and he, he keep brought me back to life. And I'm still standing. The enemy keep trying to get me. He keep trying to take me. But God is like, no, that's mine. That's mine. You ain't getting her. You can't touch her. She's mine. I literally had a, a dream two, two nights ago. Not last night. It might have been the night before last. Might only been one night ago. Might have been the night before last. And the enemy literally appeared in my dream and told me. He said, give me authority. And then when he was saying, give me, I said yes at first. Because I didn't know everything he was about to say. Like, yes came out. So he was like, give me. I was like, yes. And then he was like, authority over your life. And I was like, no. I was like, no. And then he asked somebody. He looked over to the side. And he was like, can I say that yes? Was that a yes? And then whoever was there, because I didn't see this person. Whoever was there told him no. That was not a yes. And you cannot accept that. And I was like, thank you, God. Because you were. And when I woke up out that dream. It was like 3.30 in the morning. I woke up out that dream, and I gave God all the glory. And I told God, you will be the only one who will have authority over my life. You are the only one who has dominion over me. You are the only one who has control over me. There is no one. I will never bow down to another God. I will never bow down to the devil. I will never give him a right to be in my life, to have control over my life. And I said, Satan, you get out of my life right now. I evict you in the name of Jesus. You have no right. You have no authority. And you get under my feet where you belong. I have authority over you. You will not touch my life and you will not touch the lives of my children and I just went off I just let him know because he'll do that because I'm, I'm so close <laughs> I'm so close to doing what God to, to, to walking in my calling I'm so close that he's trying to do anything he can I mean these demons that's been trying to control me my whole life trying to take over my mind and my actions my behaviors trying to persuade me I'm defeating these demons now. And before they were defeating me. And they're not defeating me anymore. I'm, I'm way stronger than them. And last night, yesterday evening, after I had my little moment in the car, I went into my job. And I always felt better once I start interacting with my residents because I just love, I love them. And I got to pray for this woman I was praying for. Her. And I'm like, Lord, okay, I know this is what I'm here to do. You know, and it made me feel good. And it made me feel good because I know my purpose. And that's the thing, guys. Like, I told you, like, God was showing me that I was looking for something that I already had. Like, I was, I don't need anything. I know my purpose. I know my mission. 
God has given me security. He has provided me with protection. He is feeding me. He has developed me. He has grown me. He has maneuver me in such a way where I have so much favor over my life where I shouldn't because <laughs> I made some horrible decisions and mistakes but he has corrected me and I don't get mad about his correcting I'm about to run my window down it's hot in uh in his car and I don't get mad when he correct me I need his correction we all do we all do and um some people they want to be so prideful and <sighs> something was spoken to me I asked somebody a scenario because this is this young woman I watch on YouTube and she is so inspirational. Her name is Young Mom, Mom Nisha. And if you ever get a chance to check out her channel, you should check it out. And she's just showing her journey with God and how, you know, she's being obedient to what he's calling her to do. And though it may look weird to some people, it might not look right to some people, it may not look normal, it might not look what God, like what God, what you would think God would make you do. But I completely understand because, you know, the real. What God is telling the righteous to do, like, it's going to look foolish to the people of the world because they don't understand. But when you have the spirit in, you understand the spirit. Spirit understands spirit, right? But anyway, she was just showing her journey, how God, you know, uprooted her from her hometown. He moved her to a place she never been, didn't have any connections. And then he's uprooting her again. And, you know, she gave up her house, her car, everything she had. And she left. And she followed God, being obedient. And so I asked my husband, I said, if God caused you to give up your job, your house, you know, just your life, you know, everything that you have, would you give it up and would you follow him? And my husband said, he took a very long time to answer, first of all. And I said, well, if you got to take that long to answer, then your answer probably no. And he said, well, first, he was like, I will question God. I said, you would question God? I said, I would never question God. And he said, I would question God. I said, well, what would you ask him? And he, I was like, because God knows all things. So just, what would you ask him? And he said, I would ask him, what is what is he trying to prove? I said, excuse me? Hold up. <laughs> excuse me? You going to ask God what? Like, you going to ask God what is he trying to prove? I said, wow. And this guy's my husband. He's still battling, you know. I'm praying. And that's another story. No, okay, that's another story. You know, um, and um, after he thought about it, he was like, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, like, what am I thinking? You know, that's what he was like. Why, I wouldn't, you know, why would I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. But he said, basically, if he didn't have any money, then he wouldn't go. And I said, that's the difference between you and I. I was like, I would pack up and I would leave with no problem. And he was like, I know you would. He was like, I know you would go. He was like, because that's where you are. He was like, that's where you are with God. He was like, I'm not there yet. And that's kind of hard, though, because we're married. So if God is calling one, me to do something, we're married, we're connected, right? You know what I'm saying? So we should both do it. So if God called me to go to, pack up and move to a different place and to, you know, just restart somewhere new, and my husband didn't want to come with me, I got to follow God because God is first. God is above all things. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys, like, how serious I am about that. I was talking to my four-year-old this morning, and he was like, I love you, Mom. I love you so much. I was like, I know. I love you, too. He was like, but I love God more. And I was like, that's right. You love God first. I said, you love God, and then who you love? He was like, Mommy. I was like, that's right. Teach your kids right, right? God is first. I teach my, my, tell my younger one. When you grow up and you get married, my, not my middle son, when you grow up and you get married, it's God, your wife, your children, than me i said don't ever put me above god don't ever put me above your wife and don't ever put me above your kids and he says well you're my mom i said i know but when you have your family that's your family and i'm gonna be okay you know you gotta teach them the biblical foundation of family all right the 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 the, the way that god wants it to be planned it to be you know it's God, husband, children, and then uh, everybody else. You know, and some people don't. Under, some people don't understand that. That's why their house is out of order. And my, I don't know if my camera is dirty or I don't know, but that's why there's no order in the house, man. There's no order in the house. Um, I'm back. I'm stuck in traffic. I don't know what's going on. 
The only thing I hate about coming to my job sometimes is they always doing some type of work on this road. It don't matter where we at in this road. It could be way down there, way down there. But right now, it's like right in front of my job. Like, I'm literally stuck in traffic. But I always take things as this means something like whenever things happen in me i don't in my life i don't ever really think like it's a coincidence i always feel like god is trying to show me something or tell me something like there's some type of lesson i don't know if i can make this look any better it's dark i only got seven minutes to get in my my job guys and i gotta leave out of there in less than an hour <sighs> pray for miss Pray for me, but don't pray for me if you ain't gonna pray for me. Pray for me, pray for me if you're gonna pray for me, but don't pray for me if you're not gonna pray for me. Like <laughs> when people be like, I'll pray for you, you know, and well, they don't they don't have no intention. Ooh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, this is horrible. When they don't have any intentions on praying for you, they just say it because it sounds nice, they just sound, say it because it sound good, they just say it because everybody else saying it. Man, don't pray for me if you don't mean it. Don't tell me you're going to pray for me if you don't plan on praying for me. Okay? And then second of all, if you don't pray to the God that I pray to, if you don't have a relationship with the God that I serve, don't pray for me, baby, because I don't want those type of prayers. All right? Because what you praying ain't for me. That's period. I don't need everybody in their mama praying for me. I only need the real ones praying for me. And if you ain't the real one, keep it because I don't want it. And that's period. But, um... I'm pulling up into this parking lot. I'm about to go in here for this hour. And then, <laughs> y'all can tell I'm feeling so much better because my, my sense of humor is back. This is the Yolanda. This is the, the, the Yolanda, me, right here. Yeah. I'm very silly and very goofy and lighthearted. And that's just how I am. That's why God I placed me in positions where I work with people because I have a way of just bringing light to people i don't know what it is sometimes i don't even try to do it it just happens it's just my nature i've always been like that my whole life but i love my personality i do and i wouldn't want another one um, um, god is always teaching us he's always showing us he's always like a lot of people say that they don't hear god or they say that god don't talk to them i remember one time somebody told me um um, somebody told them that God talks to them every day. And this person was like, mm, I was like, hmm, I don't, he don't talk to me every day. I don't, and I'm like, God will talk to you every single day. He will talk to you every single day. The problem is, are you listening every single day? Are you taking time to hear him every single day? Are you opening up yourself to receive him every single day? God will talk to you every minute, every second, every hour of the day. And it was one time he was talking to me so much, it was like an overflow of just, okay, Lord, okay, Lord, I hear you, God, I hear you, God. And then you had those times where you just let life consume you and you can't hear his voice because you're too busy. Take time. Take that time, that quiet time. And I don't even care what it is no more. Like, ooh, I don't even care what it is no more. For real, like, if I'm just riding in my car, if I'm at the store, I don't even care no more. Like, God is with me. So if he with me, that means he can hear me and I can hear him. I'll get in my car, I'll turn off all the noise. No music, no phone, just me and God. That's all I need. Like, if I really want to take that, that time with God. Like, He's my friend, he's my husband, he's my savior, he's my lover, he's my counselor, he's my comforter, he's my joy, he's my he's my strength, he's my peace, like he the perfect spouse. <laughs> he the perfect spouse. All right. Man, don't ever put nobody before God. Don't put your husband before God. Don't put your kids before God. Don't put your friends before God. Don't put you before God. God, God come even before you. You ain't nothing without him. You ain't nothing without him, all right? He is the savior of the world. He created us. He's the Alpha and Omega, the great I am, the beginning and the end. He is the one and only true God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is our Jehovah. He is our Jehovah. He is, ooh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I love to say the Lord is my light and my salvation because that's what he is. That's what he is to me, and that's what he can be to you, and that's what he is to you if you allow him to be it. If you want God, to be in your heart is so easy because he is there waiting from the time you have come into this world he is waiting for you to accept him into your heart so that he can move in your life the way that this, that he needs to move in your life so that your purpose on this life can be fulfilled 
that we can all make it back to him. And I told him, I said, thank you, Lord God, for your mansion with my room. And I said, thank you for preparing my room just for me. You know exactly what I like. <laughs> and I thank you, Lord God, for preparing my room just for me. I'm about to start crying. So I pray that anyone who comes across this video, if you do not know God, that you will open up your heart to get to know God, that you will accept him, that you will accept that his son, his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for your sins, that he died for you, that he died for your sins, that he sacrificed himself for you, that you will accept him into your heart and you will say, Lord, I surrender to you. I give my heart to you. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have life. And you can choose to have life. I choose life and I pray that you choose life. Shalom. Hey guys, I am back again. I just got off work. I went in there for an hour and you will not believe, <laughs> you will not believe the amount of work I do in an hour. I'm trying to help every, trying to help people and advocate for people. But I enjoy doing it. I enjoy doing it. If it was my family member or a close family friend, I would definitely want somebody in there to be fighting for them and advocating for them and making sure that their needs are being met and make sure that they are happy. So I'm on my way to my meeting. Um, it's about 45 minutes to an hour away. So I might try to check in with you guys when I get there. I'm gonna try to start recording more. God has definitely put it on me and shown me doing this YouTube thing. So I guess I gotta take it serious, right? But, and you guys are gonna see, I'm not hiding nothing because I'm very transparent and I don't, I'm not just saying it to sound nice. That's just how I'm gonna be. That's just how it is. But I'm gonna turn off my phone because I need my, um, my GPS. But you guys be blessed. Shalom. before I go into the meeting I want to try I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sneak and get maybe some clips in my meeting I don't know how suspicious I'll look with my phone and everything but if I can I will don't ask me why I'm whispering in the bathroom there's clearly no one here but me but <laughs> anyway trying to get more comfortable in front of this camera so bear with me Can I have a bag of chips? I'm, 
They need to take the sign down. So I avoided it and tried to go around. And I'm not from that city, so I have no, no idea where I was going. I thought the GPS was going to reroute me, and it didn't. So I ended up doing this big old U turn. In one mile, use the right lane to exit right. Nobody told you to put on your brakes, you see me getting over. What the heck? Yeah, so I'm about to go stop out my job real quick. My um, site, but I'm not staying. I'm about to just run in real quick and take a look at something. Then I'm coming back out. So uh, actually no, I'm going home. I'm going home. I ain't about to play no games with that. Because I know if I go in there I might get stuck talking to people. And I'm trying to go home. I'm already gonna be here Friday all day anyways. I'm gonna be there Friday for like In 1.6 miles, turn left on Mahoney. Okay, I had to stop the video to turn that GPS off because not only is that thing getting on my nerves, you guys are about to all know my address and know where I live and know exactly how to get to my house because it's literally. But I don't. I'm gonna have to play this back to see if you can hear it. I'm pretty sure you can hear it. But girl, she's trying to give out my whole being like that ain't happening. I'm ready to get home though, I ain't gonna lie. I probably won't even open up my computer until about seven o'clock tonight because I like working at night versus in the afternoon. Uh, Cause I have more distractions, but I don't know, with my son being at football practice, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I hope his dad made it home. Cause if he didn't, that means I'm gonna have to take him. Matter of fact, I'll talk to you guys later soon.